Hey, welcome back to Blue Collar Coder. So glad you're here. So in this one, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna do a project video, and this one is going to be a Pokemon search page written in React, using TypeScript, using lots of different hooks, and creating our own custom hook, and using a new component library called Fower. It's a CSS utility first component library. It's really cool. Let's go jump into the office and get it done. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at the app that we're going to go reproduce. So this is a list of Pokemon, and you can search it by just typing in search term up here. It's case insensitive, so it picks up Bulbasaur even though it's capitalized. And I can delete that. And I can also select and unselect Pokemon, although really it doesn't do anything currently. It just kind of sets and unsets that button. Okay, let's go build ourselves an app. So I'm gonna head on over to the terminal and then I'm gonna use yarn and then create and specify I want a React app and specify the name of that. I'll call it Fower Pokemon. And then I'll give it a template, which in this case is gonna be TypeScript. Okay, looking good. I'm going to go into Fower Pokemon then. And I'm gonna copy across my Pokemon.json file into the public directory. I'm just gonna take a look. There's a bunch of directories in here, but primarily public, which are just static assets, and then source, which is the source code. And then I'm gonna go and recursively copy my Pokemon directory that's full of images into that public directory as well. Now, don't worry, all of this stuff is on the GitHub link that's down in the description. So let me go and bring up VS Code in this project. All right, let's go have a look at the files that I've added. The most important one is Pokemon.json. That's basically our data. It's got an ID, which has a numeric value in it. It's got a name, which has an object, it's either which has Japanese, English, French, and Chinese. It's got a list of all of the types for that Pokemon, and then it's got a list of its attributes, so it's kind of the strength of that Pokemon. And then over in the Pokemon directory, there's a bunch of cool images of random Pokemon. So that's, that's the data set that we're gonna be working with. And we're gonna pull it like you would pull data from a server because it is a server. <laughs> all right, uh, let me go and remove all the CSS to start. Don't need any of that. And then over in the app TSX file, we'll, we'll take it down to the studs, as they say, and we'll just remove pretty much everything in here. And then we'll just drop in there, hello there. And now we're gonna start it up. Okay, so, Pretty cool, got hello there stuck up in the left-hand corner of the page. So the next thing I wanna do is bring in that Fower component library that I was talking about. This is a different kind of component library though. This is a utility first CSS component library. So what does that mean? Well, what does utility first mean? So utility first means that your CSS rules are pretty much one per class name. So let's say that you have a class name called text align, that might set the text alignment rule to, let's say text align left, it would be text align and then left in that one rule in that one class. And what you do is you basically kind of string together all of these class names to build up the look that you want. There's nothing out of the box that's kind of canned and ready to go like you might get from a, say a material or a foundation or a bootstrap. So the canonical utility first CSS library is Tailwind. And it's basically just CSS. There are some component libraries that wrap it, but it's pretty much just the CSS. But if you're into components, you might want something like a Chakra UI, which has a similar kind of feel. You can just go and add like a padding or whatever to each instance of a component and just kind of move it around, change the colors and the sizes and all that. But Chakra comes with a bunch of components out of the box that look beautiful, but you might be the kind of person who wants complete control over that. So this one, Fower, kind of sits sort of in between those two extremes. It's not just CSS, although you can download just the CSS. So it has components, but it doesn't have kind of canned out of the box, like button or anything like that. You've got to go build that yourself. So let's give it a try. I'm gonna go and do start with React. And then I'm gonna go here and copy out Fower React and bring it into our Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna do a yarn add on that. And once again, do a yarn start. 
And that'll be the last time that we'll have to do that. So there's no visual difference now. So now let's go and bring in the kind of foundational element of the Fower system, which is box. And we'll bring that in from Fower React. And so let's wrap that hello there in a box and see if anything changes. Nope, no visual changes. Okay, so cool. So let's try out adding a little padding. So I'm gonna go back over to the Fower site and then scroll down and look for padding. There you go, cool. So padding, you just use P dash and then you give it the value. So let's say P10 and that's gonna add some padding onto that box. Nice, okay, so that is brought in a little bit. Now I wanna make the maximum width a certain size. So let's go take a look at that, max width and it's got max W dash and then a value. So let's do max W and then let's say 1200 pixels. And now I wanna align it into the center of the screen, which means putting a margin of auto on it. So how do I do that? I'll go over here to margin and I can see that I can just give it a text value. So I can say margin equals and then give it a text value just like it could any other property. So in this case, I'm just gonna say auto. So this shows you already a couple of the different ways that you can use these utility classes on this box component. So that's pretty cool. Let's go have a look over and see how this is doing. Yeah, okay. It's brought into the center of the screen. That's pretty awesome. So the first thing I wanna try out is how to make that text input box. So let's start off with another box. And I want it to be an input. So the way that you do that is you do as, and then give it the tag name. So in this case, an input. And let's just try that out. So it's got nothing, but it actually is an input there. It's just all the style has been removed. So we're basically just starting from scratch. So again, I'm gonna do some interior padding. I'm gonna go ahead and make the text size large. So how do I go do, go do that? Let's go over to margin over here and uh, documentation. There's text size. And I'll pick something really big, like text 4XL. So that's really, really big. And then I'll start putting a border on it. So let's go to bordering. Is that there we go border radius you use rounded border width you just give it a border and a value and then border color which is kind of what we need we just start like typing border purple 1500 like that so okay cool let us do that then so i'm going to do a border of one i'm going to do a rounded xl and then i'm going to do a border gray at 500, the values go between 100 and 900 and they're basically the intensity of that color. So this is basically a 50% gray. Let's go take a look and see how that looks. Oh, not bad actually. So, you know, pretty good. The only thing is it's not going out to the entire width of that 1200 pixels. So let's go and do that. Width equals 100%. Cool, all right, now it's stretching all the way across and I, and I can interact with it, but I'm not actually tracking that state yet. So let's do that. Let me go bring in use state. And I'm gonna go create a new piece of state. We'll call it filter. And then we'll have a set filter there. And we'll do use state and then give it a, an empty string to start. And let's see, can I just set that value? So I'm gonna go over here, say value equals, and then give it the filter. Cool. And then I also wanna be able to set that filter. So unchange equals, and then I need to give it a function. So in this case, it's gonna take an event. I'm gonna call it anything I want, but I'm gonna call it EVT in this case. And then I'm gonna call that set filter with the target value. That's the way we normally do it. But here's a problem. So in this case, if we go over here, we can see that it thinks that the form event is an, on an HTML div element. So it's, and that's the base element of a box. So it's not respecting this as input and, and passing the right properties through. So the way that I figured out how to do this was I brought in instead styled, which is from another Fower library, and this one's called styled. And with that one, I can just create a new component type. So I can say input, and then I can say that it's just a styled input. And that basically gives me an analog of box, but in this case, the, the base type is an input field. So let's go and replace all of that with input. And now we can see that we're okay. So if I go over here, command K, command I, I can see that this is an HTML input element. So we're getting, getting the right element there. So that's a good sign. 
So to see if this works, let's go and uh, put filter in there. Perfect, awesome. Okay, great, so now we're tracking that input control. And the next thing we wanna do is actually go and get those Pokemon. So I need to define an interface for what a Pokemon is. And we'll call that just Pokemon. And we'll start off with that ID, which was a number. And then I think there was a name and it had within it an English and a Japanese string. That's really all I care about. And then there was also type, which was a string array. And I think there was a base that had a record, which was going from a string key to a numeric value like that. So that was a Pokemon. And next thing we need to do is we need to go and have a place to store that. So let's create all Pokemon, which would be, which also has a set all Pokemon. And that use state is going to start with an array. And let's go and bring in use effect. And I'll pop that in here. And so we only want our use effect to run once on load. And so I'm going to use an empty dependency array. So it never gets rerun. It just gets run the once. And from there, I'm going to do our fetch of Pokemon.json, which is in the public directory. And that's going to return us a response. And with that response, I'm going to pick out the JSON portion of that. So then I'll get the data as objects. And then with that data, with that set of Pokemon, which is a Pokemon array, I'm going to then set all Pokemon to that Pokemon. But it's giving us an error. So what was it telling us? So let's bring up our problems. And then it's telling us that an argument of type Pokemon array is not assignable to a parameter of type set state action with a, on a never array. So what's this never thing from? So if I go over here and I hit command K, command I on all Pokemon, we can see that all Pokemon is declared as a never array, which basically means it doesn't have any idea what would go into this array. So it's just gonna say, it can just be an array of one element and that, or zero elements and that's it. Which is clearly not what we want. What we want is a Pokemon array. So I'm gonna go and declare that this is a Pokemon array. And now everything is good, except for the fact that we're not using all Pokemon yet. So let's go and use all Pokemon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is define that we have a, an array of Pokemon and that we're going to derive from all Pokemon where we take the, the filter of that and we will get our, because we know it's a Pokemon, we can say that we have a name and it's English. And we're gonna take that English name, make it lowercase. And then see if it includes the filter text. But there's a little bit of a twist here because we need to lowercase the filter text first. So let's go do that. And do that on filter to make it lowercase, cool. Great, okay. So now we have this filtered Pokemon and let's just go and set a bunch of boxes to that. So we're gonna create a box and then within that box, we will go through our Pokemon and we'll map them. And so we'll have a Pokemon. And with that Pokemon, we will then go and create another box, which will have the Pokemon.name.english like that. And then I'll put a key on there with the Pokemon ID. Let's give ourselves a little more space. We're never going to need that sidebar again. Okay. So let's take actually one more thing. I want to slice this down just to the top 10. Okay. Oh, neat. Okay. So it's already working. So we got Bulbasaur over here and there you go. And I can make these big. Let's just make these big so you can see them by just, just quickly adding on that text. 
three XL. How about that? And that's one of the great things about it. Something like this Fower, where you can just kind of go and just experiment with stuff. Like, hey, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Make it just you just you just make really really small changes, and it's really cool. So let's see again. Bulbasaur works fine. Actually, I was wrong. We are going to need the side panel because the next thing I want to do is I want to go and take this, all of this code here, and turn it into its own custom component. I'm going to call use Pokemon. So let's go and create a new file called use Pokemon.ts. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export a default function called use Pokemon. It's not going to take any parameters. But let's see, it's going to, well, first we need to define what a Pokemon is. So I need to copy that interface over here. And you know what, we'll export that as well from here. And I also need to bring in React, use state and use effect. Actually, all I just need is use state and use effect at this point. So this is looking pretty good, but we want to return some stuff. So I'm going to return an object. And that object is going to have the Pokemon. as well as the filter and the set filter. So that's pretty much what we need on the consumer side of this. So, okay, let's type out the return value here. So Pokemon is going to be an array of Pokemon. Our filter is just gonna be a string and our set filter is going to be a function that uh, takes a string, honestly, as a string. Also, it could be a function that takes a filter that takes a function <laughs> that takes a filter as a string and returns a string. All right. And then that in turn returns a void. So is it happy with that? It is. Okay. That's just because this, this, state setter here is actually kind of a little tricky, but that's okay. So let's go use this thing. So use Pokemon. So let's go and get rid of this. Don't need that anymore. And let's bring in use Pokemon. And now we'll just say we want filter and set filter and Pokemon is going to equal use Pokemon. And we'll get rid of all of this. Okay, let's give this a try. Let's give our new custom hook a try. So we'll go over here and hey, looking pretty good. Nice, if I refresh the page just to make sure, yep, everything's looking good. So now we have this kind of reusable Pokemon component, but I do wanna kind of push this a little bit. So I'm gonna go and create another piece of state. You know, we'll call it like a, a account. Right, and let's say set count. We'll just have a PC use state that says one. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna have basically a button on here that when I press it, it's going to go and just bump that count. So button, and then on the on click that button, I'm going to just set count to count plus one. I'm not even gonna show count, honestly, just bump count. This really doesn't matter. All I wanna do is I just want this component to basically re-render a bunch of times. So let's take a look at this. Uh, there we go, bump count. Here, I'll, and I'll even put it on there so we show you. Cool, bump count, bop, 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 great. And so that's going to rerun this whole function, this, this app function, every time I click that button. And that's gonna rerun use Pokemon. So what I wanna do is I wanna put a, a use effect in here and just gonna console log. And it's gonna say, Pokemon changed. And it's only gonna get called when Pokemon changes. Okay, so let's go over here and I'm gonna bring up my inspector, go into my console. And we can see already that it says Pokemon changed. That's okay, that's basically it. Their use effect ran. It started off with an empty array and now it's got an array of Pokemon in it. But if I bump the count, watch, watch what happens to Pokemon. Pokemon keeps changing. So why is that? Well, what's happening is that we're actually 
recalculating, creating a new array every time that we go through this. And so if you've got code that depends on the actual real value of Pokemon changing and only then actually doing that change, you're going to be, have a problem if you write your code this way. So the, what we need to use instead is use memo. And we'll take this code here and we'll say that Pokemon equals and then use memo. And then we're going to give it this uh, function and we're going to drop this in here. And we're just going to return out that. So whatever the return of use memo becomes that value. But it's complaining at this point that we have no dependency array. So let's go and add one. And now it's complaining that the dependency array does not actually include all of the data that we access inside of this memo, which is true. So that what we access, well, we access filter. And we access all Pokemon. Okay, now let's take a look. So I'm going to run. And again, I get the two Pokemon change, no problem. But every time I do bump count, no problem. Because all Pokemon hasn't changed and filter hasn't changed. So there's no reason to rerun this use memo and there's no reason to recalculate Pokemon and therefore that Pokemon value will not have changed. But if I go and make an, a substantive change, like in this case, Ivy, we can see that over here we do say the Pokemon has changed. So this is a really important thing when you're building your own custom hooks is to make sure that you're making good use of use memo and also use callback, which we will do in a bit. Okay, but I am actually gonna use use callback over here And then I'm going to assign to on set filter. And I'm just going to go take this callback down here, EVT set filter. And I'm going to say that it's, it's perennial, it never changes. And there you go. But it is still giving me an issue. So I'm going to go and put on there set filter as well. Although I, I will say, and let's go put set filter on there, that set filter will never ever change. So if I run again, oops, I'm missing use effect, so let me get that back. I also don't need the state anymore, so let me get rid of that. All right, so set filter changed once, and then I can do anything I want, and set filter is never ever gonna change. So you can rely on that, that's, that's not a problem. Okay, let's get rid of this use effect. And the next thing I'm gonna do is keep on building on top of this Pokemon card. I'm just gonna do some more visual stuff. We'll start with uh, making this card look more like a card. So I'm gonna go and add a little bit of padding on it. I'm gonna add a border to it. I'm gonna make that border, let's say again, gray at 500. And then again, rounded XL. I don't need the text size in there yet, but what I am gonna do is Go and bring in an image. And the source on that image is slash Pokemon. When then the Pokemon dot name dot English, lowercase with a dot JPEG attached on the end, and a width of 100%. It's going to make it responsive. And then I'm gonna put in the box for the name in English and make that one large. Now I need to bring in image and we can see from this actually, that there's very little export from the Fowler React stuff. It's actually kind of meant to work well, I believe with React Native and React Native has very few primitives. So this is basically working with that. In this case, you've just got box, image, text, so it's pretty primitive. Okay, so cool. We're starting to see that that card is there. We're getting our text and we're getting this massive image. So the next thing I wanna do is look at how grids are done because I wanna do basically a two column grid in each one of those cards. So here we go, we got a grid. We can tell that we want three columns and a gap of 20. So I'm just gonna pop that in there. And But I want two columns and not three. 
and I want a slightly smaller gap, I guess. There we go. Yeah, nice, looking pretty good, okay. So I'm just gonna go and finish up by giving us a two column layout so we have cards sitting side by side with a little gap as well. So I'm gonna go and grab this and just pop it into that parent box. And there we go. So we got the start of our thing. Let's go and add a little bit of margin to the top just to kind of pull it off the top rail a little bit. That's looking really good. All right, can't wait to see you in the conclusion of this. When we finish up the project, we continue on building out our custom hook and also looking deeper into Fower. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed part one of a two-part series in building out this Pokemon search app. Of course, I'd love to hear from you, get your comments on what you liked about, say, the custom hooks or Fower. And of course, you can also jump onto the Discord server that's linked to in the description and ask your questions there. But in the meantime, of course, I'd love to encourage you to tell your friends about this video, share it with them, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time one of these blue collar videos comes out.